Okay, so um, you'll know if you went through the brief that one of the things we're um, uh, missing out with you guys is the is the monoprint because we can't use the print room at uh, Te Oha at the moment. Mm -hmm. The reason we were going to do monoprinting is so that you can have a play with the technique, but what you would have found is that it's another way of creating uh, textures so that you can utilize them later on, putting them into Photoshop or using them in a different way. So we're going to recreate the same thing, but instead of, uh, instead of doing a monoprint, we're going to utilize photographs or images and then through the channels, create a texture. So the, the same kind of process, but through photography rather than um, uh, printmaking. So this will be, this will be part of the, um, the hand in. Doesn't have to be too complicated and I'll go through and give you an example of the process. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I'm gonna talk about um, exactly what we have to hand in next week and, and how to go about it and all that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna jump, um, jump into Photoshop. Um, just yell out if you can see Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I can um, see so there's a uh, there's a few there's a few different images here, and we'll just um, oh. my machine goes a bit um, slow at times, so we'll just do it uh, bit by bit. Okay, so I'm going to start off with um, with this one. Uh, the only reason that I'm separating my images is because when I click on them, it's not showing them. So it's probably a, a memory issue. So this is where you can kind of show your creativity and how you make a texture. So you can you can photograph anything. It can be anything from uh, shadows to objects to all sorts of things. It doesn't have to be a texture. That you take a photograph of. So in this case, if I grab this, and this is the process, and I'm going to repeat it a number of times. So if I select all, which is Command A, and um, just so you know, uh, if you're on a PC, Command is the Control key, and Option key is Alt. So when I talk about Command and Option, if you're on a PC, well, I'm talking about Control and Alt. So if I uh, Command A, I Command um, X and cut it and I go to the channels again I'm just separating this out for a, because of a memory issue I make a new channel by clicking that little icon down the bottom command V I paste it and what I want to do is I want to try and make more of a an abstract texture out of it so if I go command L which brings up the levels I can give this image more contrast. I can move the slider, the middle slider, back and forth. I'm going to move it this way and I'm going to bring the darks down. And what I'm looking at is I'm going to try and keep this area through here as a texture. When I've got what I want, I'll go OK. And all I'm going to do now is simply kind of block it out. So if I get the paintbrush, it's black. And I come in here, I'm gonna paint out, but I'm trying to keep these areas separate. So I'm just finding it, essentially finding an area I like. And then separating it out so that I get a texture with it. Make the brush a bit bigger by using the right square bracket. So the brush that I'm using at the moment is a hard brush because I'm literally going in and finding uh, where there's gaps and masking it out. So the brush is going up and down as I do this, mm. 
marking out what I don't want. And then uh, just for the uh, command D, so make sure nothing's selected, just for the sake of um, speed, I'm selecting the bit that I like, command shift I, which is selecting the inverse, option delete is gonna fill it with the black. So it's, that's the quick key way, it's exactly the same as going to edit, fill, foreground color, which is black, 100%, yep, okay, same thing. Command D, and it still looks a little bit too much like something to me, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna get the burn tool, and at the moment it's 46, I'm gonna put it up right up to 100 and it shadows. The brush is a bit softer. And I'm just trying to eat into this even more. Now with the black paintbrush, I'll take out the bits I don't like. I might um, erase these bits all together. And I have my selection. So now with that channel, I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna click on the, um, the layer, make a new layer, option delete, and I have my I have my texture. I can click on a color, go OK, option shift delete, just fills it and keeps it um, with transparency. And that's something I can use as a texture. I don't know that this one is necessarily um such a great texture but something like this might become really interesting if i come in here and say actually the only bit i want to have as a texture is that command shift i so i've got the inverse i know i shouldn't really use uh delete but i will in this case and now i've gone i've deselected command d I've gone Command T to bring up the transform tool. Okay, now to me, that combined with an image starts to make a little bit more of an interesting pattern. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. <coughs> and let's look at another one. So the same, the same with this, Command A to se select all. I cut it. The reason I'm um, uh, cutting it is essentially I don't want to have that original file there anymore. I'm only working with the channels. Paste it. I go Command L again. I go OK. And again, what area do I think? would end up making a kind of interesting pattern. Command D to get rid of that selection. And I'm just command plusing it up. And now I can come in here and keep what I want and get rid of what I don't. So uh, the part that I suppose is important with this uh, this process is to not just take a photo and then convert the whole thing and say that's my texture. You have to um, you have to make some kind of choices. You have to decide what out of this image looks kind of interesting and would make a great texture. So I'm coming in here, and because it's a hard brush, I can come right in and select between these elements and keep exactly what I want and get rid of everything else. Smaller brush. Yep. 
that's it. And I can um, give myself a bit more space with a bigger brush before I do the selection thing again. Or you could just make a huge brush and paint it out. But I find it a bit quicker to go select around what I've just done. That's just command zero to fit it back in the window. Command shift I, so I can see the selection around the outside. Option delete, filling it with this background color. And I'm going to command D, command T, and I'm going to actually, um, this time I'm going to scale it while I'm in the channels. I go outside that square and I get a little rotation thing. And if I hold the shift key, it'll constrain it to um, 45 degrees or straight up and down. Scale it a bit more, hit return. And then I just load up that selection, go to my layers, make a new layer. Option delete, fills with the foreground color. And again, I'm starting to get an interesting um, texture. So uh, let's try this one. Command, Command A, Command X to cut it. So Command A to select all, Command X to cut it. Into the channels, new channel, Command V to paste it, and then back to my levels. And I can work out what's looking a bit more interesting. If I push the slider to the left, it's going to lighten everything up. So I could, I could push it this way. And so now I'm going to focus on this area here. I usually like um, pushing it the other way into the, um, into the darker areas. This pattern down here is kind of interesting. But I think through here, it looks better to me. So I'm going to go OK. I can see that selection. So Command D, always Command D to make sure you're not messing with something that's already selected. And again, with a paintbrush, it's a hard paintbrush. I can select between these areas a wee bit, up and down with the paintbrush using the um, left and right square brackets and isolate an area that you think looks kind of interesting. So it's picking out the areas rather than just saying, okay, I'm going to use the texture of, you know, in this case, a sweatshirt. Making the brush a bit bigger. Same thing, I'm gonna deal with that bit. So I'll select this area. Command go to fit it in the window. Command shift I. Option delete to fill it with black. Command D, and now if I go Command T, I can scale that up a bit go outside this corner and it turns into a little turn tool and I can rotate it, get a shape that I want and hit return. So now I can load this, go to my layers, new layer and option delete to fill it with a color, command D. And if I Use my other um, image, this one. So now I'm going to grab that layer, or I can grab the image here, drag it across onto the other one. I'm just doing this for the um, sake sake of it. You don't have to layer it up like this, but you can you can start to see that already. You're starting to get some kind of intriguing. Uh, Intriguing results, these things no longer uh, 
look look like what they originally are. You can't look at this and see ash from a fireplace, and you can't look at this and kind of see the texture of a um, t-shirt. So it's this this sort of thing that we're um, we're after. This one will be a really nice one when it goes into the channel. So if I select all, uh, cut it, go to the channels, a new channel, command V to paste it, and then command L again. Like if I push this up to dark areas, I'm going to get some really, really nice and to play through, through here, brighten it up. All this is doing is giving it more contrast. I've still got that selection around the edge, so I need to go Command D. And then again, isolate the area that you think could be really interesting. So until you uh, add contrast through the channels you and play around with the, um, the slider and the levels you're never quite sure what's going to be you know the area worth taking and i know i know that it's a bit of a no-no to scale things up uh, in photoshop uh, but in this case so i've made my selection command shift i option delete for black but in this case really we're just we're just making textures so whether they're a bit fuzzy or clear or whatever doesn't usually um, matter too much command D oh, sorry command T to transform I'll load that selection into the layers new layer Give it another color, option delete, command Z. And with this one, uh, where'd it go? Same thing, I can grab this, drag it across. Maybe I'll give it a new color. Option shift, delete, fill it with that color. And again, you can play with um, these options here to see what you can kind of get out of it. I'm just going to leave it on um, multiply. Uh, lucky last, command all, cut it. In the channels, a new channel, paste it, Command L. What's well, going to become more inter uh, more interesting here? I'll give it more contrast, lighten it. Darken it. You know, so, so, so looking at um, looking at this, it might be as simple as that shape there that I want to play with, or play with some textures through um, through there. I'm probably going to go for this area here, so I can even um, decide to have it a bit lighter, or I can darken it up and make it more contrasty. I'll just go there. And this time I'm going to um, I'm going to use white to edit into it. And sometimes you'll find that you know you can um, clear cut it, you get what you want, but there's uh, some areas that just aren't working. So let's say we want to cut it more through that area there. Um, then change the opacity of the paintbrush down. Oh, I need to soften that, soften it right off. And just by clicking, you can probably hear the, the mouse 
going crazy and you can take the opacity down so you can even eat into the image a bit more bump it up take these areas out a bit oh it's a bit um nasty there this was a little bit of a um hard area to to do but again i can probably come into the burn tool and because i've isolated a bit i can just make it a bit too much command plus come into this area here And I can start to eat back into it. And depending where I'm clicking, it's going to change the edge of that. It's no longer going to be that fuzzy, fuzzy brush. That was a little bit of a tricky one to do. Command D. When I tried to um, do the selection tool, it wasn't working. It's because I had something selected. So Command D. I'll go around it. Command Zero. Command Shift I, so everything else is selected. I fill it with white, Option Delete. Command D. I'll go. Oh, um, this one's a bit. This one's a bit different because it's because it's the other way around. You'll see when I go um, Command T, it picks up the whole image. I'll just hit return to get uh, rid of that. It's because it's black on white this time, so it's always looking for the white on an image. If I go Command I and go Command T, it just picks up on the white. That's where it does the um, picks up the boundary from. I'll hit return. Now this one. I can see because I've scaled it so much, it's a little bit um, it's a little bit fuzzy. I can keep that as an effect, or I can go into filter, and I can go to something like pixel. Um, sorry, noise, median, and can you see it's putting a blur on it? But it's a bit different to a blur, and it's actually giving me a smooth edge or a different quality rather than it looking like a, uh, an image that's pixelated because it's been scaled up. So I'll try that. Select it, go to my layers, new layer. I give it another color, option delete, command D, and we'll add this onto the, um, Onto the others, drag it across. And I can hit it with um, multiply. Now, I wonder if I've. Um, uh, open recent. I'll just uh, show you an example. I think I tried this. Uh, Tried this the other day. So if I come in here and I'm going to grab uh, this layer, this is where it can sometimes, I don't know if this is quite the right shape, but I'll have a go. Um, if I hold down the shift key, I can distort this a bit. Uh, so if I fill this with white, White's my background color, so Command Shift um, Delete. It's on Multiply. That's why it disappeared. So I can put it on. Um, I'll put it on screen, and I can lighten the opacity off a bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, a gradient. I'm going to make a new layer. And I'll drag it across the top. Option. I'll clip it. And so you've probably uh, seen this uh, technique 
before that people use quite a bit where it looks um, like an, an old film camera where lights seeped in and done this kind of odd color thing. You'll see it on movies as well, like the guy that does, um, can't re remember his name now, but does Transformers and the latest Star Trek movies. Has this kind of lens flares going in and you know all these kind of uh, effects. This thing here, I think that edge is a bit harsh. JJ Abrams. JJ Abrams, that's it. Do you like JJ Abrams movies? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> so look, I'm gonna. Um, uh, this edge is a bit harsh, but I like the quality out here. So I'm just gonna feather it. So I'm gonna soften the edge of my selection. I'll go uh, 55. Hit return, and now when I drag with the the lasso tool, this is gonna have a soft edge. So the transition between this area and this area will be nice and smooth. Uh, if I don't wanna see that selection, I can go Command H. The selection's still there, Command H will bring it back again. But it just lets you look at it without that option there. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and it's retaining this, but it's softening off that. Uh, edge a wee bit. She maybe it did look a bit better, harder. I'm not sure, but this this is the um, this is the quality with this sort of stuff is uh, making textures out of uh, out of absolutely anything, and then the way you can uh, utilize them. There's a myriad of um, ways to to do that. So your your task is. Just has to be this. You just have to um, have an image of a black and white, um, oops, texture. Does it matter how many images that we use? I want, I want you um, just to make a single texture. You don't have to do this um, overlay thing. I. Uh, I would I would say for the hand in, mm -hmm. give us your best uh, single single texture. But as far as the, as far as the workbook goes, if you overlay a couple and you get a good pattern out of that, that just shows more um, experimentation and exploration. Okay. But I suppose I suppose uh, it's important for me to see what you're looking at and observing and the bits that you're picking out but um yeah especially for the um the workbook the experimentation would be would be great now uh this and your this uh, final piece like in your workbook is a wee bit different because it has to be in a way a repeatable process so this is one where um i do want you to kind of do uh a step by step. It can be simple, like like saying, um, I use the levels, and I pushed it more towards the black, and then I use the dodge tool or I use the burn tool to darken it up. Um, just a bit more of a of a step by step. You don't have to do the whole thing of saying I put a selection around it. No, just um, basic basic steps. Okay, so I'll stop. Um. And so Adrian, do we do a full, um, so using all the different techniques, we put that in our workbook and then we do like a final composition. Um, so we put it all together this, into this, a piece. Yeah, oh sorry, the, um, the, the final one, the, the textural one, it's, it's, stand, it's standalone. Okay, so you're just, you're just doing exactly what I did, just make a black and white texture and um, print it out or hand it in your workbook. The photo, the photo collage, um, it should, uh, you know, you did, you did your photographs and then you did your drawings and everything and it was supposed to be um, a compilation of all of, those, uh, all of those things. I've given you a little bit of um, leeway with this because of the COVID-19 and I've said, if you want to take images off the net, you can you can do that. The main the main thing with the photo collage is you've got to show um, 
that you can mask and you've got to show that you can put something into the channels and load it up, whether that be a drawing, a cartoon, whatever, whatever it is. Okay. That, that's, that's what I'm looking for. And that if you use adjustment layers and all that sort of thing, that there's nothing destructive. So no kind of, um, no kind of erasing. You're always trying to use a, a, a mask. Okay. Else. Cool. So look, look, let's, um, uh, let's just, talk through it as far as the as far as the hand in goes so we're clear on what we need to what we need to hand in sorry doing a little bit of um uh scribbling be with you in a uh a sec Okay, cool. So um, let's go for it. So, so with the um, with the hand in. So if you want to get a pen and write this stuff, I will put it up on um, Trello as well as a little bit of a, a spec sheet. The brief the brief says hand in um, uh, six photographs. Oh. Okay, um, uh, can you can you hand in on Trello as far as the um, the workbook goes? Uh, you can, but your workbook your workbook can't be just a visual representation. So if you put photographs or anything in there and you're using Trello as your complete hand in as a workbook, you have to comment on the images. You have to. Um, do what you would have done in a workbook. And the other thing as well is, uh, so far, the only things that are going up on Trello seem to be your own work. Remember that the workbook usually has things like um, an example of a photographer that use, uh, okay, uh, that uses um, uh, shallow depth of field. So if, you, if you're doing all that sort of stuff and making comments, then, then that's perfectly fine. So anyway, um, hand in, we'll talk, talk about the workbook uh, in a minute, but first we'll talk about assessment too. So on the brief it says six, six photographs. So um, uh, two photos to do with depth of field. So uh, um, a long focal depth and a shallow uh, depth of field. Okay, so whatever you photograph, either the background going off into the distance is nice and clear, all the way back or the background starts to blur off shallow depth of field as opposed to a, um, a long depth of field uh, two photographs to do with um, speed or movement so this is your, this is your shutter speed so one where if you've got water in it it's blurred another one where the water's frozen uh, and then two photographs that deal with um, light so this is more to do with ISO. So this was the uh, the long the long exposures, the kind of uh, pa painting with the torch, all that sort of thing. That would certainly do as as one of them. The problem is is that uh, some of you still need to take more photographs, and you haven't got a digital camera. You're stuck at home in isolation, or uh, the photographs are elsewhere and you can't, um, you can't access them. So you still have to hand uh, images in for the, um, for the hand in next week. But if you have a bad example of depth of field, um, you can either hand that in and then do a write up beside it and say, the reason this didn't work is because my ISO needed to be lower or higher on those. So you can do a write up for that. Or if you really have nothing, you can find something, um, find something on the web, put it in, but you have to do a really, really clear um, write up about it. What's um, uh, what you think the 
depth of how they've done the depth of field, how you would have done it, that sort of thing. Um, so the photography one's going to be a little bit of a, um, a mix match because of the way it's because of the way it's gone. You have to have uh, four drawings. So two of them have to be perspective drawings, and uh, two um, two blind drawings. Okay, uh, they can be um, they can be simple. It doesn't have to be a single point perspective where it's doing the whole room. It can be just an it can be just an object. That's up to you. So two blind drawings, two perspective drawings. The two perspective drawings, one of them has to be first point perspective or single point perspective. The other has to be double point perspective. Uh, there's, um, it, it, on the brief it said two digital compositions. So two uh, photo collages on Photoshop. I'm changing that to one because I think you've got quite a lot of um, work to do. So your best, uh, a photo collage composition on Photoshop. And then what we did today, one example where you've gained the texture by doing it through the channels. Exactly what we exactly what we did today. So that's that's essentially the hand in for um, assignment two. So all of this is good, just going to be set up as a, um, a PDF. Now the workbook Uh, the the workbook hand in light. Some of you have probably done quite extensive uh, physical workbooks. Uh, some of you are probably going to use um, Trello. Some of you have got a bit of a mix. If you have a um, a digital workbook, so this means you've used, if not Trello, like InDesign or Illustrator or, or set it up that way. If you save it and it ends up being more than a 50 megabyte file, then you have, to, uh, you have to make a selection. You have to cut some of the pages um, out because otherwise it's just gonna to be too much of a nightmare. If you've done a physical workbook and you start photographing every page and, sending, and making a PDF and sending it through, it just won't work. So if you've got a physical workbook, or even if you've got a digital one, it can't go over uh, 50 megabytes. So you're going to have to make a you're going to have to make a selection. You're going to have to make a selection uh, process. So you're going to have to pick your best pages and put them in. Ideally, what I'm after is um, With the workbook, is it's going to be uh, one, at least one page, which deals with your texture experiment. So the thing we did today. So a few different examples. Obviously, you pick your best one, but a page that deals with that. Um, two, uh, two pages for the photo. Uh, collage, so playing around with images on Photoshop, doing screen captures, doing a bit of a um, doing a bit of a write up. Those two pages might also include um, uh, artists that you've you've found collage work online, and you're um, you're giving a an indication of you know what you think of their work, what's working, what you like, what you don't. Uh, as far as the drawings go, that's going to be That's going to be um, four pages, a mix of uh, perspective and blind drawing. Again, this can incorporate. Uh, this can incorporate. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, uh, for sure, you guys can. Um, uh, send me your uh, workbooks via e email or I can give you um, uh, a space to drop it next week. But um, 
if you don't want to put if you don't want to put it up on Trello. I think Trello I think Trello is going to be a hassle for the the hand in unless you've done it bit by bit over time because if you try and drop a large PDF in there at all it just won't it just won't work. Okay, uh, so the four pages for the um, drawings and then at at least. Uh, six pages for the um, photography. So showing different, uh, showing different examples. And actually, I'm going to um, just do a just share the screen for a second and go to um, go to Trello. I think. Uh, yeah, okay. So, um, uh, Vanessa, sorry, I'm going to use your one as, a, um, uh, as an example. Uh, so, this one here, Vanessa sent a, um, a workbook through, and then I've uh, added to it. So, this I think is a, is a pretty reasonable um, example. So, this is Aperture, so we're looking at depth of field. So um, she's found a photographer that uses depth of field, had a guess at all these um, settings and done a bit of a write-up, fantastic. And then I've come in and said, just go on the net and grab some examples. So I've done this where I've gone, these are all, this is a, just a page, um, eight images of long depth of field. So all I'm doing is grabbing images, chucking them up, and having a guess. This guess can be pretty rough, but it's just to let me see that you've got a good understanding of what it means, a, a long depth of field. I've come in here and said, okay, so gone on the net. So this, this took me literally like 10 minutes to go and grab images and chuck them in and design. Okay, so it doesn't take um, that long. I'm not saying you should do it in 10 minutes, but it's pretty quick. So it just shows a shallow depth of field. And then these ones, you may or may not um, have this. This is the problem with the, with the photography. So I've gone and said, these are my versions. So don't forget, a bad image is still as good as a good image as long as you can write up. If you have a terrible image of long depth of field, then put it in and write it up and just say, this didn't work and these are the reasons why, or I got depth of field wrong. Because that shows me that you're progressing and that you're learning. Um, and then I've chucked at one page that shows my versions of uh, my images, shallow depth of field. Uh, and then this is what um, uh, Vanessa had that is, you know, her, selection of best images. So I, I would say this would be the one where, you know, two of these images would go into the, um, uh, the assignment to hand in. Okay, so that's, and that's really, and that's just looking at um, uh, depth of field. So I think that's pretty. Um, I think that's pretty reasonable. It's just giving me an indication. It's just showing me that um, you know what you're talking about when it comes to uh, depth of field. And I don't think it's um, an excessive amount of work. So when I'm uh, when I'm talking about uh, you know six pages for photography and four pages of um, drawings and two pages of photo uh, photo collages, this. This is kind of a minimum, okay? Because part of it's just going to be research, grabbing things off the, um, the net and talking about it. I was going to come along here and show you a couple of other uh, things that got uh, chucked in here. So I'll put today's um, Zoom up on here. As far as the um, photo collage goes, I chucked... Um, this image in. Okay, um, but just keep it, you know, keep it simple. 
you know, I've, I've written up that all this is, is it's, it's really, it's two, it's two images with masks. It's the figure and it's the, um, it's the blueberries. It's one of my drawings that's chucked in there through the channels. There's another paintbrush stroke that's put in from the channels. There's a little bit here with the mask making your own brush and an image, but essentially it shows what I need to see. It shows a mask and it shows um, that I'm able to use the channels. So don't try and do too much. It, you can keep it pretty simple. Even this is starting to, um, starting to go too far. Whoops. Uh, get rid of that. Uh, this is another uh, tutorial texture through channels. So the one that we were just doing. So it's, it's a variation. And I think um, that's the only other things that have been uh, uh, added in. I'm going to stop sharing because it looks like uh, a couple more messages have come through. Uh, oh, um, reload the little tutorial. Uh, to YouTube, was that the one, was that the one I just did with the channels? Uh, yeah, uh, cool. I've um, I've recorded this as a Zoom, so I'm going to put um, put that up. You can check MU. What does that mean on Trello? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. I'm just. Uh, okay. It's okay if you've already done something and it's. Um, uh, No, there's not. Um, okay, the yeah, look, you can, you can, um, you can. Right. Yeah. Okay. It looks like um, it looks like the hardest bit is going to be the um the photography and that's that's simply because um uh, uh a lot of you won't be able to do it again so if you didn't get the photography done while we were still at tech thinking that you could still use the cameras and do some good photography then you become unstuck that's the um that's the problem with the with the f photography so it's you know unfair to kind of penalize you because of that so what i'm saying with the um what i'm saying with the photography is what i need to see from the photography is that you understand those processes that you know what depth of field means uh, when i say shallow depth of field when i say a longer depth of field you understand um, how to play with light whether that's long exposure whether that's changing the iso you know that with the shutter speeds, if you slow it, um, if you slow the shutter speed down, that um, you're going to get blur. So whether that's people walking past or whether that's the movement of water, if you have a high shutter speed, um, it's going to freeze it. So um, yes, I want to you to um, uh, use your own photographs, even if they're um, uh, not so good. But if they're not so good, or you want to use someone else's um, photographs because you don't have any for that particular piece of the hand and let's say shallow depth of field then yes you can use someone else's photo but you have to explain that it's not yours and you have to give it a more detailed write-up otherwise all you have to do is um is essentially uh, uh, uh essentially if it's your photograph just put well this is what the iso blah 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 was i'm happy you know that's it i'm happy but if it's not, you have to um, 
you have to do a bit more of an explanation. Um, yeah, you can use um, uh, photographs from another time, like if you've taken other photographs um, for another class this year, that's fine. As long as you, um, as long as you say that, and you um, are able to talk about the depth of field or whatever it is that you're discussing. Now, um, one other thing that uh, just, uh, yep, cool. Um, one other thing, I'll just quickly jump back to Photoshop. This is important for the, um, the hand in. See if I've got. Um, uh, whoops. Okay. Uh, you obviously you do a copy of your um, uh, image. What you also have to do is you have to do a screen capture of your layers palette and a screen capture of your channels. Because what I'm gonna, um, uh, what I'm gonna look at is whether you've been able to um, mask. So if I come down here, I can see, okay, so the figure has got a mask on it, that's perfect. The blueberries have got a mask on it, excellent, that's, that's great. So a few other things, okay, a clipping mask, yeah, that's, you know, extra, extra bonus, if you will, I can see, um, and actually I deleted mine off, which was a bit of a shame, but this was a pen line, and it would show up in the channels, and then I've loaded it, and done it here. So I've actually, unfortunately, I've erased my pen lines, but I can see this one here, this is the channel, so, you know, um, so that's in the channels, so I can see, ah, uh, yeah, okay. So they've used that, and they've loaded it up here to get the transparency. So it's this that um, I'm gonna check. So things to make sure that, um, you know, you're not erasing or there's not mistakes on here. So screen captures of this stuff is part of the hand in for the, the one photo collage that you choose. Okay, uh, messages. Right, look, I'm going to stop the recording there.